We have some great news from Hyundai and this new Hyundai Tucson is actually more important than you think and that has to do with the interior. So of course what we're going to do in this video is have a look at this refresh. We now have the US spec for the 2025 Hyundai Tucson. Have a look at the design from front side and rear and yes we need to look at this interior because I'm really glad to see what Hyundai and Volkswagen are doing right now to their brand new interior. So first of all, let's have a look at this article before we jump into Photoshop. Car and driver link down below in the description. So 2025 Hyundai Tucson, uh, new mug and desktop like dash shown in US spec. And it also, here's the thing, it also has more physical controls in the interior. Thank you Hyundai for doing that. You get a new grille with larger, larger illuminated elements and the dash is now available with two 12.3 inch screens. That also seems to be the standard now. We have a dual setup and pretty much it feels like 60-70% of brand new cars have this new 12.3 inch uh, dual setup. Uh, sharing a single glass panel, the, a new column shifter, more physical buttons and finally you do get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on the higher trims. So we have a new wheel designs as well as restyled front and rear bumpers. Gonna uh, go into detail uh, of what the changes are in a minute. Reducing the amount of individual daytime run lights in the front end. So these used to be, uh, they used to have more of these uh, daytime run lights in the, in the grill of the, for the pre-facelift. Now they reduced it to eight from 10. And then you have the rear wiper blade. It also grows by three inches. I guess that's a detail that is worth uh, mentioning. So it comes with a standard 187 horsepower, 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, made it to an eight speed automatic transmission and front and all wheel drive. And I do believe that if you go for the base model here, 187 horsepower feels like it's probably enough but I would definitely want to have the all-wheel drive since this is an SUV. Every single package that has this crossover SUV style to it, I would always want to go for the all-wheel drive option just simply because it feels like that's what it was designed to have. Also, you'll have the choice of a 231 horsepower hybrid powertrain or a 268 horsepower plug-in hybrid setup. And I do think this will be a fantastic setup because they both come standard with the all-wheel drive and 268 horsepower in this. It's gonna be a pretty quick car. So the two cells uh, dashboard has been dramatically transformed. The left screen is the gauge cluster and the right screen is the infotainment screen. The switch gear also changes from predominantly touch sensitive controls to more physical buttons and knobs. And I'm gonna show you exactly what they did here, the changes. Specifically, you have more physical uh, buttons and knobs for the climate control settings and the stereo. And overall, this interior just feels a lot better than the old one. I'm not so sure about this integration of the screens, but again, that's what we get these days. You now also have this useful shelf in front of the passenger that can be used to store whatever you want, obviously. You have a newly available head-up display as well. The fingerprint scanner on the dash that can be used in place of a smart key. So you just put your finger on this little thing to start up the car and the additional over-the-air software updates. A lot of new tech in this uh, brand new um, or facelifted uh, Hyundai Tucson. The prices, of course, this new tech comes with a bump in price probably uh, and we don't have the pricing for the 2025 20, uh, model uh, just yet but the 2024 model started at $28,875 going all the way up to the hybrid plug-in hybrid uh, at uh, just over $40,000. So with that said, let's jump into Photoshop here. Let's have a look at this design. Let's see what's going on with the brand new or facelifted Hyundai Tucson. So up top we do have the old one and I do think if you look at the old one here, it still feels like a very, very modern looking car because it has a, a funky styling to it. And just as I said, when we, when we talked about the new Kia K4, the, the South Koreans, they just have a lot of fun with their designs. Just imagine how much fun it would be to sketch up and have the freedom to put all of these lines and creases into the body. Some might say it feels a little over stylized, but there are two ways you can do over stylized. You can do it where you have a bunch of random lines. So you have different lines in the front then different from the side, and then you have a totally different vibe in the rear. But here, I feel like we do have a lot of lines going on in this design, but they still have sort of a, 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 a connection all around, the, all around the car. It's the same style 
all around the car. So you can see the new LEDs, specifically that's the big change in the front end, that's how you can separate these two uh, quickly. You have four LEDs here in the old one, stick it in a little bit here in the grill. You also have an LED here in the daytime run light. This is of course a very typical bumper headlight setup. So the main headlight sits down here. We have this nice chamfer at the lower section of the car. And in the new one, they reduced these four pieces here into, as you can see, I think the new one looks a little cleaner because it feels like they essentially simplified the front end just a little bit. And as you can see, we went down from four LEDs in the grill to three, and they are also larger. So instead of having it be a little messy in the front end with smaller LEDs, we now have lesser LEDs, but they're also bigger. Still have the big uh, LED here uh, where we would normally uh, I guess see the headlight be positioned. I love this again this line up top that has a clear starting point for all the graphics going on down beneath it. This chamfer right here is also new. This feels a little bit more maybe I would say static than the old one but we do have a new chamfer here which is this piece that goes in under this main LED daytime run light that is in the headlight position. Still have the headlights in the bumper here, which I think is totally fine for Hyundai to do this because they've been doing it for a while now and I feel like they were the uh, one of the companies that first started this trend to have the headlights in, in the bumper itself. The lower section to me feels a little bit more rugged than the uh, previous one uh, because we do have this styling at the lower section feels almost like a skid plate in the front obviously this is not metal this is most likely going to be made out of plastic now looking at the side view here and keep in mind that this is a trim that we're looking at from the front where you have the uh, black plastic cladding uh, being black around the wheelhouses but if we look at the side view here you can also spec your uh, Tucson to have it be in body color and I do think that just steps up the elegance of this design. It makes it feel a little bit more expensive. You can see it here, for example, the old one had in this uh, trim have these be uh, matte black, just simple plastic. But in the new one here, when we have them in body color, it just feels more ex exclusive and more classy. A little bit more expensive maybe. But what I love again about Hyundai are all these lines that we have. We have this forward motion thanks to these lines. So we have this line here cutting in very interesting and very very unique shoulder line treatment for this design. You can see that we have this line now cutting in from the corner of the taillights dipping down into the body surface here. We have the same situation here for the front fender looking very cool. These wheels look decent. I, I do prefer the the new wheels over the old wheels. However, I would probably want to have s just see what it would look like with some aftermarket wheels. And you can actually have some uh, pretty uh, advanced design wheels for this car because the rest of the body is very, very stylized. You can also see that in the top part here, we do have this greenhouse trim being in chrome. And Hyundai has this same vibe that we get from Kia. They always try to make some cool little design feature of the trim piece in the C or D pillar of their cars. But again, having it, the first of all, the plastic cladding around the wheel uh, arches, having be uh, body color and have the trim that goes around the greenhouse be black. Again, it just feels like a more upscale version of a Tucson. This is probably the top of the line, I would assume, with the blacked out graphics around the greenhouse. Last but not least, the rear end. Not a lot of changes in the rear because this is a proper facelift, meaning that they're focusing on the face of the car and not too much in the rear end. I do like what's going on here. We have a very sharp looking graphics for the taillights with these claws sticking down, housed in a nice beautiful chamfer on the old one here. We have the exact same design on the new one. And what I love about this design is that you can see that we, even in this price range, usually what manufacturers do, they have the rear wiper sitting right here and sticking it, just resting something like this. But now uh, for the Tucson, e even in the pre-facelift, they stuck it up here. So they made this roof spoiler a little bit longer. And this is what I love to see because now we can't see a, a, an ugly wiper sitting here. Instead, it's hidden up here underneath this spoiler and it just creates a much cleaner design. And we don't need more stuff in the rear end since this is a very stylized car. So I think removing that is a great idea. You can see that we still have the clean LED 
bar here stretching across the entire width and the taillight seems to be almost exactly, I do think they are exactly the same as the pre-facelift. The difference is here though, if you look further down into the bumper, I'm not sure which one I prefer because they restyled this section of the two zones. So we have a brand new bumper and diffuser at the back. I do like this pattern that we have on the pre-facelift. It just creates some more interesting features to look at. Now they cleaned it up a little bit and they also changed the positioning of the reverse lights sitting down here at the, uh, in, in the bumper, more horizontal in the old one. And in the new one, you can see that it got more squarish, maybe more pronounced in the in integration of the bumper. It still looks good, but I'm not sure which one of these I prefer. I like these fins that we have in the diffuser on the pre-facelift as well. Now last but not least, this interior, fantastic job by Hyundai and also Volkswagen to create this uh, new interiors with the more physical touches in the interior. And, and the reason why I think this is cool because if Hyundai and Volkswagen are jumping, some might think they're moving backwards, but I actually think they're moving forwards because I always want to have physical knobs and buttons instead of these touch sensitive buttons that we have in the previous Tucson, this new one feels so much better to just use as a driver, everyday driver of this car. And I think if Volkswagen and Hyundai are jumping on this train to go back to physical buttons, I hope a lot of other manufacturers are gonna do the same. So in the old one, I did, I did really like this integration of the vents. It has this waterfall design for, for the center console and then going into these vents looking uh, similar on the passenger side, similar to what we have on the driver's side, very small little gauge cluster here that does have a housing for it. So I wish we kept this situation. And I also kind of wish we had the same integration of the infotainment screen here. So separate the gauge cluster from the infotainment screen. What we have now in the new one, you can see that first of all, the uh, gear selector buttons here are gone. There is nothing here. Instead, you have a wireless charger and the gear selector itself is now located somewhere uh, in the steering wheel. I do believe it's this thick stock that we have down here. And the big change here for the gauge cluster and the infotainment screen is going to be that we now have the infotainment screen and the gauge cluster being in one single pane of glass like this. And you have the infotainment here, obviously the gauge cluster on the left side. I do believe this is probably the, the fingerprint the sensitive button that you have there to start up the car without the key. You also have a start button here, but the big change is going to happen right here for the physical knobs and button for the climate control. So looking at the old one, I'm not sure I like these touch. You, you, you can't feel that you're pressing something, but there were still sort of buttons, I do think you could uh, call them. But this new uh, situation that we have here with a proper solid dial for the uh, temperature gauge, I think that is just the way to go. And I do, again, I do think a lot more manufacturers uh, will go this route further down the line. You have some USBs further down and you also have these cup holders and this new shelf. So you see that the dash itself has been completely redesigned. We don't really have this beautiful waterfall design anymore, but what this new design gives us is a shelf here where you can put whatever you want and store some uh, keys or phones or something like that in this big shelf that you have for the passengers. So overall, a great refresh, both when it comes to the technology and also I would say both the exterior and the interior design is an improvement over the pre-facelift Hyundai Tucson.